Hey guys, and welcome back to class. All right, today's video is specifically on using metric prefixes. And that's one of the cool things about like the SI units like we use in science is the ability that we have then to use these prefixes and they're with it. And I've given you a pretty extensive list of these. And if you're wondering like kind of like the reasons why we have these prefixes, well, let's just say, for example, let's talk about distance. If you're talking about distance, the SI basic unit is the meter is what we measure in. That's your base unit. So the base unit is a meter. Well, depending on what you want to measure, let's just say it's a distance from like your house to the school. Well, your house to the school, using a unit like kilometers might be appropriate because of what represents. Kilometer, if you look over here, prefix means kilo, and that literally means 1,000 meters. So if you live the kilometer from school, oh yeah, we get it. Now, at the same time, that unit, let's say, for example, if you were actually trying to measure, uh, how about this? Let's measure, I'll throw a little biology in today. What if you were trying to measure, I think that's the first cell I've ever drawn in my life. Let's say, though, you were trying to, like, measure a cell or even measuring a nucleus within a cell. Then, obviously, you would need a much, much smaller, I don't know, I don't know anything about biology. I'm going to guess maybe even micrometers. Somebody watching this is like, no, it's, hey, who cares? You're the one watching this video. So anyway, let's get right into this, though, because a lot of times one of the things you're going to be asked to do is actually to convert from one prefix to another prefix. So say, for example, a problem gives you gigameters and you're asked to change it to kilometers. How is it that you do that? So that's all we're doing in this video today. Real simple, real easy. And I'm trying to keep it in the like the five minute range here on teaching you this, making it a lot shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we're going to have a yacht of fun. And when it's all done, I'm going to give you a good attaboy. So come on. Yeah, the jokes are great, right? So let's just go right in it. So here you go. So here's an example of a question. I want you to convert, uh, I'm going to assume this is 62, 62 micrometers to a nanometer. Now the thing is, if you can convert feet to inches, then you can do this. So check it out. All I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and write down 62. And now I'm going to go up here and look, what does micro, mu? Mu is micro and it stands for 10 to the negative 6. So all this means is 62 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. And now just like doing inches to feet, I'm going to draw a line, put an X, make a little engineering bar, whatever it is you want to call it here. My goal is to change it to a nanometer. Well, all right, what does nano stand for? Well, go back to your chart if you need to. Nano represents the prefix 10 to the negative 9. 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And all we have to do is divide. 62 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 9. Hey, wait a minute. This is going to be kind of easy math, isn't it? That's going to be 62 times 10 to the A. What happens when you divide powers like this? So when you divide exponents, what do you do? Negative 6. All you got to do is subtract them. Minus negative 9. Wait a minute. That's a plus. So my answer ends up being what? 62 times 10 to the 3 nanometers. Bam. And that's all I've got to do to do this. If you are really struggling, you could, of course, break out your calculator and plug it in there. 62, 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1, 10. Well, don't match that. That's a mistake. Negative 9. And lo and behold, we get 62,000, which is 62 times 10 to the third. So anyway, doing these, that's what's so beautiful about this. It's so fast. So let's do another one. 25 megaliters. Liter is the basic unit for volume in SI. So let's go with 25 mega. And if we go back to our chart, and if you didn't have it, you could pause this video and copy it down. Mega means 10 to the 6. So 25 times 10 to the 6 liters. Draw my line. Put my X. Draw my line. I want to change this to a centiliter. Why would you ever do this? There's none. But hey, you're in a class, so don't tell them what the teacher is asking you to do. So let's go back up here. A centiliter, well, a centa means 10 to the negative 2. Basically, then, it means kind of backwards thinking that there are 100 centiliters in a liter. But what's cool about this is 
In order to do this problem now, all you have to do is divide. So 10 to the 6 minus 10 to the negative 2. So 6 minus negative means plus. So this answer is 25 times 10 to the 8 centiliters. And that's all there is to do in these problems. If you feel you got it, pause the video and go to work. If not, here's a few more examples. So how about 5.02 picograms? You know, I love pico de gallo, but hey, that's neither here nor there. So let's move on. What is it? Ah, and I've already messed up because I meant to write down what pico stands for. So pico is representative of what metric prefix? Pico is 10 to the negative 12. So let's move back over and let's write that times 10 to the negative 12 grams, which means you don't have a lot of grams if you've got a picogram. So we're going to convert this to milligrams. So I'm going to write milligrams. And now my prefix for milli, if you look on the other page, the prefix for milli is 1 times 10 to the negative third. So now look at all we have to do. Negative 12, whoa, negative 12 minus, remember, when you divide exponents, all you do is subtract. So negative 12 minus negative 3 becomes, well, negative 12 plus 3. So what have we got? 5.02 times 10 to the negative 9 milligrams is the answer. Ooh, how about kilowatts? Let's get some electricity in here. So 123 kilowatts. I encourage you, you should go try and practice this first and then do it. So what does kilo stand for? stands for times 10 to the 3. That's why we'd say that there's a 1,000 watts in a kilowatt. And so I'll write down my base unit, which is a watt. Uh, watt? Sorry, that'd be a joke from a long time ago. Anyway, now we'll go with 1 megawatt. And mega represents 10 to the 6. So all I have to do now is 3 minus my other exponent, which would be negative 3. So 123 times 10 to the negative 3 megawatts. Mr. Cole, I'm working on a computer and it won't let me type this in. It's making me do this. Oh, well, in that case, just undo your scientific notation. So that's negative third means move it 1, 2, 3 to the left. So it'd be 0 0.123 megawatts if you're doing it like a computer program that wouldn't let you in. And you may have to do that. So don't be shocked depending on what you got. Let's do this last one if you're still. Ah, there's two more. Uh, I think one more is probably good enough if you're still watching. Four point, now, this is interesting. How do you handle this? You've been given 4.3 times 10 to the 4 kilo seconds. That should be a lowercase k. So how do you do this conversion where you've got an exponent and you've got a prefix? Well, what's kilo mean? 10 to the 3rd. So 10 to the 4 and 10 to the 3, all we're doing is combining these two exponents together. So to do this problem, we would write 4.3 times 10 to the 7, times 10 to the 7, what's our base unit? Seconds. Now draw your line, put your x. We're converting to a gigasecond. So uh, da -da -da -da, 1 giga is 10 to the 9. And if you're wondering, yeah, when I started college, I had a class where we had to memorize all these. So 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So your answer would be 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 giga. Always write your units at the end. All right. Uh, this same one, if you're still watching, surely you, you're kind of good with this by now. We've got another exponent again, so all you have to do, micro is 10 to the negative 6. So when you get ready to work this problem, what would you actually write down? 3 times 10 to the what? negative 9 joules, and then go through, work it out. You're trying to convert to a centijoule. So centi means 1 times 10 to the negative 2. So negative 9 minus negative 2. Add, so this is actually 3 times 10 to the 7. What well, we end up with? Centijoules, and that would be our answer. If you're still with me, cool, awesome. So hopefully you got this and you're good to go. Maybe you already saw the video. Anyway, peace out. Bye.